You know, I do remember a point in my career where my work, my day job, my nine to five was killing me. I had discovered that I was a workaholic. I mean, there was a point in my life where I was losing control of my life. I was stuck in a world of work and defined by it. Something had to change and my values had to change. I had to rediscover who I really was. And you see it time and time again. We push aside the things in our life that bring us the most joy in favor of being more conventional, being more ordinary. And there's a point after maybe we have our first jobs, start a family, where, where we stop working at our craft, whether it's music, whether it's arts, sports, whatever. It doesn't have to be that way. If you're not growing, you're not living. If you were to start every day doing what you want to do, not doing what you have to do, what would it be? Everyone has something in them and for many people it's some form of art and for some people it's something that might not seem creative but if you really look at it, it is. Everyone has something. I do think that our society teaches people to push that down in favor of what we might think is safety or security. For those that have made the decision, or even for those who are still contemplating on making that decision, on taking those first steps to pursue their passions, you have to be prepared to face adversity head on, to face uncertainty head on. And quite frankly, you have to be prepared to face the truth. You have to be completely honest with yourself and you have to be willing to answer the challenge. Are you willing to change to improve your current situation and follow a new path of intention? Because if it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. My priorities are completely different now. I try not to think too much about how I would define myself, but what's more important is really how my kids would describe me. And I'm, I'm proud to know my kids think of me as a musician. And they barely understand my nine to five. That first day I met Noel on stage and he just walks up to me and he shakes my hand and he says, hi, I'm Noel. And I'm, I mean, he was like a really attractive guy back then. 
<laughs> we freshly graduated students and just bought our first house and got married that same year. And I think we had a lot of fun. I think that we felt like we were playing house. And our second pregnancy turned out to just be this like crazy life twist. We learned a lot about perspective and um, we grew a lot. Throughout our journey, we've been able to talk to each other about most things and just be really open. So Noelle is really talented musically. And I think that even to this day, I feel like he's, he doesn't really know like how special his talent is. Like I think he's really humble about it. I believe I take care in all the things I do. When I decide to do something, I'm going all in. That's just who I am. I pride myself in quality work. See, the thing is, I want to be remembered by and defined by what I'm truly passionate about. And that's today, my life's journey of connecting with people through guitar building. So in terms of challenges for both of us together because we have been so devoted to our careers it's been really challenging trying to find a balance to spend time with one another but also finding happiness in, in life you know there was a one point where I was just working so many hours and so many weekends that I started to feel depressed and Cliff the same thing it was just really hard finding that balance between career and life. I think for Cliff, he started to really uh, get in touch with his passions, particularly of, of woodworking. That's when things started to make a turn. So for myself, it was that career change, and for him, it was getting in touch with that's, you know, that passion of his. Whenever he embarks on something, he gives it 1,000%. 1, so for Cliff, it was really a change from being so hyper-focused on his day-to-day -day job that really didn't bring him a lot of, I mean, he's, he still has a day-to-day -day job, but it doesn't really fulfill him to the level that guitar building and, and this project does. So it's about switching energy that he was spending on his work and then spending that energy on something that truly fulfills him. We were in a band together from our last years in high school to well after university and even into our first years of our, of our new careers out of school. Performing on all kinds of stages, bars, lounges, and we, we even had some fans. We recognized each other's individual talents. We learned from each other's hard work ethic at a very young age. There was a, this unspoken trust we developed over time. This experience gave us the foundation for what was to come later in life. I remember very specifically that, you know, when I saw him at the show and I saw his guitars and I saw these other, these other luthiers, um, just resonating towards him. I really felt it was his niche. It was his zone, and I was like super proud of him. But I'm also freaking inspired because I've put in so much work into my art and my, my music. Why am I not doing something myself that's just as meaningful and just as creative and as inspiring as, as Cliff is doing? It really made me look at myself and say, what the hell am I meant to do? Showcasing the guitars, and Noel plays a classical guitar. And so he'd ask me, hey, can, do you make classical guitars? Or? But you know, at the time I didn't because uh, I just started actually. But you know, I wanted to accept this challenge because I wanted to grow as a guitar builder. I mean, that, that was the reason I was there. 
Uh, but you know, on the deeper side of things, it was it was my opportunity to reconnect with Noel. I mean, I haven't seen the guy in, in such a long time. I mean, this this was the best opportunity to do just that. for a bunch of grants, some government grants, and we failed a number of times, but we, but we were persistent. It's not about the money. It's not about the transaction. It was about the, the relationship that I had with, with Noel. And that's why it was so easy to say, yeah, let's do it. Let's actually do it. You know, we, we definitely had concerns kind of at the outset of this project, the, the amount of work, the time, and the energy it would take you know, amidst having full-time jobs. I mean, we were putting ourselves out there and being vulnerable to some degree. And so obviously there was a natural hesitation. For me, music is about people and connections. And more and more so these days, I think that's what we all crave. I mean, we, we, we want to have human interaction and and meaningful interactions with people, and I think music does that. I admire Noel for uh, not, obviously he's been playing guitar, but not as much classical for years, and like to, to pull back into that world, which is, there's so much detail and technique involved. I have such admiration for people that put the time to bring those skills back to where they were at a certain point too, and push it further because um, I know what kind of effort that needs and uh, it's a daunting task too because I mean we're all we all have a certain level of perfection that we want to achieve and we, we want to perform well so it's like you have to put some pride aside and just go for it you know and just chip away at it and keep improving and then get to the point where you're performing to your standard Oh, this is from a, a, a water buffalo. <laughs> you just made that up. <laughs> no, seriously. How did I meet Cliff? Late Saturday afternoon, I was teaching a public guitar building class after lunch and uh, Cliff came up into my studio and introduced himself and uh, I think the words that he said were, I gotta do this or I'm gonna do this. We just kind of hit it off. Guitar building is much like playing. That energy, it needs a medium. Cliff was kind of a natural student. He wasn't afraid to make a mistake. But that being said, that what's, you know, we learn from our failures, not from our triumphs. And so whether it's a sound or a creative thought, guitar building allows you to achieve both. It's, as a luthier, as a teacher, as a student, it's all important work. Um, and so you leave your mistakes in the past and you look forward to a new mark and uh, um, a chance to build or create um, again another time.
My parents put me in guitar and organ <laughs> lessons at a very young age. I picked up my first guitar when I was seven, I think, and I played electric, I played acoustic, a little bit of classical, and I've never really asked what led to the decision to put me in lessons, but I do know that they sacrificed a lot. I'm so thankful that they did. Maybe the kids will follow in our footsteps. We want to give them the same opportunities our parents gave us. But if it wasn't for my dad, I, I actually don't know where I'd be because it was actually him that allowed me to express my, my perfectionist type qualities. I mean, he, he, he showed me and he taught me how to carve uh, alongside him. And uh, I was in my zone and, you know, he didn't question me, he didn't challenge me, he just, he just let me do my thing. And so, at the end of it all, I do have to thank both my parents for nurturing that creative home because it allowed me to explore uh, all other different kinds of uh, art forms and it allowed me to express myself creatively. The project is evolving. You know, on the surface, sure, we are building a guitar. I'm, I'm learning how to play it so we can showcase it at a concert and, and we're documenting the journey. You know, ever since we've started connecting with people, showing people our work and, and our progress, people actually are reaching out to us, saying that we are inspiring them. I got some news today from, or at least I got a response today from Mount Royal, um, the, the Bella concert hall, and they want to meet up, and they're interested in, in having us, of course, if we can, they're probably looking for us to pay for it and all that stuff, but um, over the next couple weeks, we can meet with them and film that and get that process, and then it's just... My goal now is very, very clear, uh, and it's, it's maybe this gives me an opportunity to say, you know what, go as hard as you possibly can. Creativity to me is about being inspired, number one, but number two, being innovative, using ingenuity. I think I'm going to be using all of these types of things, whether they be in the shop or in my life. Sometimes perfection is simplicity. It's clarity. It's clean. And so, even though I say quality is perfection, you could argue that simplicity is also perfection. There's so many ideas going on in my head, I just have to actually sit in, in the shop and do it. 
Like I need, I need to finish this guitar now. You know, it's not just the rosette that I sand it through, it's a combination of a lot of different things. It's trying to keep the balance of work, Sally, family. You know, in this project, it's starting to feel like a job. I'm, I'm losing excitement. The motivation is, is slowly diminishing and, and I'm, I'm just really tired. And so, you know, I ask, like, how am I going to get through all this? And for me, I, I, I'm trying to take my craft to the next level. So I can't lose sight in the fact that these challenges are all just part of it. And so it's like, it's like going to the gym for the first time. Um, your first days, weeks, they're, they're going to suck. But the pain that you go through is in fact part of your transformation and getting stronger. And I just have to remember that. I'm, I'm sad for him. I, I, I feel, I feel for him. Because I know he will beat himself up over this and there's nothing I can do to help him. We're already so tired, but now we're just deflated. <laughs> there is nothing harder than not even knowing why you're doing it anymore. Questioning if, if, the, if the sacrifice is even worth it, but still just putting your head down to keep working, to keep working, to keep working. It's, it's a lonely place. There's always a healthy amount of, of of challenge and failure that uh, that builds who you are, who you, who you want to become. And so this is me becoming a master this year. I realize that failures are hidden opportunities. There's, there's a lot of hidden opportunities. There's always a thing called uh, silver linings. Now we've overcome quite a few challenges along our journey but I think the most important lesson that we've learned is our ability to reconnect with our true selves our true identities and values now for some people it could be the same case but for others it might be an opportunity where they create a new identity for themselves and I think that's the beauty that these challenges bring to our lives Find a way to include the most important people around you in your journey and help them actually support you rather than pull you away from that journey. Communication seems to be the key ingredient. It's asking yourself, have you put enough work and effort to overcome challenges and failures? It's really about life commitment that you have to work at every single day.
So after all the blood, sweat, and tears, and you come to a point where you have something to show for it. It's not necessarily the destination itself. It's the journey that you remember. What is Guitar Born Today? Number one, it's being authentic and true to yourself. Number two, finding a passion and finding what drives you creatively. And number three, it's sharing it with your family, your friends, and community and using it to connect with people. Try to figure out ways to, to make it happen that's better suited in your life. Because initially it's like you don't believe it's possible to fulfill that goal on a daily basis. But once you get that belief, then you've got to figure out a way to sustain it. You've got to find what you're truly into. You gotta find what defines you. You gotta find that thing that makes you who you are. There's so much power in finding like-minded people and connecting with other talents out there. If you can get out there and do what you truly love, you are giving other people permission to do the same. Just start small. We have to remind ourselves that it's always a process to get there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be pretty. You just keep working at it. And it doesn't have to be something that you're putting out there for anyone else either. If you were to do what fits your identity versus what others or society wants you to do. What will you do? And it's not an easy question, but once you figure out what it would be, then my advice is follow that.